I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. Mrs. Vance, would you like to go ahead and recognize our visit? Sure. Um, we have two special guests that we would like to recognize this evening for their work with Rochester Community Schools. So Oscar, if I may, I'll start with you and your introduction of Barb McGee and share the importance of the role that she plays here in our district and has for several years. Mrs. McGee, we stand up, go front and center. <laughs> <laughs> So for anybody that went to Rochester, you probably know Mrs. McGee really well. Um, I don't know that I got the exact answer. Do you know the exact answer of how many years you've been subbing? I, I tried think, today. I think 52 years. 52 years. <laughs> and when I was at RMS, I used to complain because I wanted Mrs. McGee to come to me. And now if she was to ever go to RMS, I'd be really upset. <laughs> <laughs> but she's a staple at Rochester High School, has been for 50 plus years. Um, it's amazing she comes to us every morning I mean every morning and is willing to go into the life skills room willing to go into the ag shop Joel Lau as a matter of fact she's a highly requested sub and a priceless uh, commodity to us so we truly appreciate that and I know mr. Snyder had I, I was fortunate enough to work with her both as a teacher and as a uh, administrator as a principal and um, she did a fantastic job anytime she'd cover my classroom. Uh, I agree with the Oscar in that she was a, a sought out sub. We'd love to have her in there. Everything was always taken care of. But she knew the kids were taken care of and that was really the most important thing. And then as a principal, she just was always there for us. And uh, the just not, not just as a sub, she was a part of the school and a part of our culture and always has been. And so we appreciate everything that you've done. You people. don't realize how much I enjoy being at the school. I love the kids. They make my life worthwhile. I've had most of these kids in school. <laughs> <laughs> and I've worked with them. But I don't think I can leave without telling you what wonderful kids you have. And a few that are misbehaving most of it isn't their trouble. It's because they need attention at home. And our teachers, we have some teachers that if other schools knew you had them, you wouldn't have them that long. They are remarkable. Our kids are learning things that other schools are not learning, I know. And we're producing students that go into fields of work that they wouldn't be able to do if they were going to some other schools. So when you think about subs, we work with these people and they're what make our lives worthwhile. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Barb, if you ever want to come into some of the carry-ins, you're still welcome. <laughs> you don't have to sub on those days. And you don't even have to bring it. So. All right. Well, um, Melissa Belvedio, if you'll stand up here with me just for a minute. Um, Melissa is one of our uh, fine teachers at Columbia, and um, she's been there for how many, tell me how many years is it? Eight. Eight years? Eight years. And then before that, weren't you? I was, I taught three. Right, right. Yeah. And, um, but no. Melissa, Melissa uh, came, she's, she's been there for a while, for eight years, but she started out doing instructional assistant stuff because she was going back to school. She wanted to be a teacher. That was kind of her goal. And it's a lot of work to go in every day and to do your daily duties as an IA, but then also do your stuff in the evening times and get your schooling and stuff complete. But we worked with her. Um, she did a fantastic job. She never let that get in the way of her coming in. And um, she worked with our kindergarten crew for a while, but then um, she's been teaching with our first grade crew now for, for a couple of years. And um, she's gonna step off and do some other things now for a little while. 
Um, but she is going to continue to come in and sub, but we feel like we want to recognize the um, commitment that you've made to our school and to our kids. Just like I said for um, Barb, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> Just like I said for Barb, um, you love the kids, and that's all that's been evident from the day that you've ever since you've been there. Um, I've known that. And that's what we really appreciate. And uh, your kids really enjoyed the time that they got to spend with you. And I really appreciated the time that I got to work with you as well. So. Yeah, I do. I love the kids. But that's the whole thing right there. I feel like if I can, if they can come in and they know that they're loved and they're appreciated and valued at school, then they can handle anything at home and can't wait to come back to school. Yeah. And I hope that I sub as many years <laughs> as you have because it, it is. They just make your life, don't they? They just make your, your day. So, so thank you. And I, I got to add to that uh, something about Mrs. Melpedio is that, um, and I shared this with my staff um, towards the end of the school year. You know, we come in, we have hard days, we have tough days, and it's never an excuse to not be friendly to somebody when you're passing by them or you know acknowledging them or anything like that no matter how bad your day is you know you can find enough energy and courage to smile and, and to do that I can't all the time and I and other people don't either and it's it's something that um, I definitely recognize by working with Mrs. Belpedio because I never once had an interaction with her where she wasn't smiling positive about the day getting started you know I've already got three parent phone calls that I'm, I've gotten and she's telling me how great of a day it's going to be and so I always referred to her as my as our light in our building because she always brought that about she was always positive no matter how hard or what struggles we had to face that day um, she was going in into it with a, uh, the pot most positive attitude so I thank you from a personal standpoint of um, what I've learned from you and that is that we have to live in the moment and we have to live for today and um, in the interactions that we have there's no excuse for uh, letting parent phone calls or whatever get in our way of interacting um, positively with everybody so I want to thank you for that and thank you for also sharing that because my staff feels the same way they would always come into me and they some of them come into my office crying Mrs. Belpedio is out there and she's so positive right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my dog did this and ate this this morning and I'm having a rough morning and she's making me feel bad. <laughs> it wasn't making you feel bad. It was just, it was, we appreciated, we noticed that. And so continue to be our life. Thank you. Real quick, Mrs. Ann, hey, first day of school, yes you can before you do, first day of school is August 3rd, you better be ready. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect you to be there. <laughs> oh, you're going to be back, I promise. Um, at this time, ma'am, you are welcome to stay if you like, there's nothing more exciting than a good board meeting. <laughs> if you are, uh, you're more than welcome to take off as I'm sure I would if I were sitting where you were. So it's all good. I'll, I'll fill you in. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much yes, for coming thank in. You. Thank you. Thanks, Melissa. At this time, we will adjourn the regular, or recess the irregular board, the irregular. Oh, I missed one. Okay, sorry. That's what I get for thinking. Mark? Oh, you could have just kept going. <laughs> you don't get to leave it. Discussion with Mr. Mark McCall about Rochester Main Street TIFF. Yeah, uh, thank you uh, for allowing me to be on your agenda. Uh, I'm a member of the Rochester Redevelopment Commission. Uh, our budget is driven by the TIF district that also impacts school budgets. So we found out, or we were made aware, that we are supposed to come report to the school board <laughs> every year, which I don't think has been done in years past. I've only been on for a little over a year. Um, and I don't know how much of an update you would have gotten in years past. Um, I don't know how active the Redevelopment Commission was. Um, this year, we've had a uh, lot of positive movement with the Redevelopment Commission. Um, we're lucky that you guys do lend Katie to us to come visit with us once a month. Um, we have this year purchased property um, that we hope will help finish the Nickel Plate Trail uh, to get it back into city limits 
Um, that process now is with our engineers. They're taking a look at the entire project and letting us know what the anticipated cost will be. So we're, we've got our fingers crossed. We were able to make that purchase this year with uh, the help of the DNR. Uh, they had a grant program that helped us match some funds that we were also awarded to help with the next phase as well. So uh, along with that, uh, this year we also contributed to the Apache Drive project that's going on that I think you guys are well aware of. Um, I think we contributed roughly $50,000 to that. Uh, right now we're going through our budget process uh, to start for next year. Uh, we've been able to check a couple big things so off to our, our project list. So we have a very active, driven board. Um, I'm excited for where the RDC is going to go in the next few years. Um, but now we have a chance to sit down, catch our breath, and uh, start prioritizing new projects. So, uh, pending your questions. Mark, would you just uh, explain for the good of the group where the uh, trail is being expanded from where to where? Uh, right now, the, I think everyone's aware the trail stops at uh, the old Hart Schaffner and Marks location. Our hope um, and part of this DNR grant is to tie it into the city trail. So our hope is in the future that it'll uh, come along. And we ran into some issues. I don't want to bog you down with some details, but uh, staying along the rail line behind the Hart Schaffner Marks and the old Safeway Steel Bead building isn't feasible. That's a wetland back in there. I don't, don't know what the requirement is for that, but that's what the DNR has told us. So they have partnered with us and we purchased property off to the side. So it'll shoot off on trying to think is that uh, I'm trying to think the name of the road Ron Fuller, I yeah remember. I can't remember it it'll eventually meet back up at 12th Street to then hopefully God willing uh, to have the trail get to 8th Street where we can tie into the city trail um, over at the golf course so that is the idea at this point and that was uh, a requirement from the DNR for us to qualify for those monies. Mark, is the RDC looking at expanding any of the TIF districts at this point? Or Not currently, oh, okay. no. Um, you know, that, Casey, you might be able to shed some light on it. That TIF district has been in place for about 10 years, I believe, maybe longer. The earliest one, yeah, at least 10 years, if not closer to 12. And I think lifespan-wise, those last 20, 25 years, if I'm not mistaken. I think 20, I think they're in a city that are maybe three or four total. Yes. I'm not sure where they would expand another tip district in the city. Yeah. But it's pretty much saturated. Anything else for work? Yeah, I I've gotten to know him all over again. I knew him when he was a kid. Did you work at a Steve Feller store? I did for yeah. five or six years. With Joe? Oh, yeah. Yeah, worked yeah. with my kids. That's where I first got to know him. And <coughs> then we disappeared into our own homes. And now we're back on our own. And now I reappeared. Yeah, we reappeared like Bethany. Bethany. <laughs> yep. Well, thank you for coming in um, to report to us. Yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Are free to go? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Now I think uh, we need to suspend the regular board meeting. Yes, and move on to the um, the open public hearing on the board offering. So we don't need a motion for that, do we? No, I don't. I don't. Lauren or Jay, if there's nobody here for public comment, I don't know if the board has any further questions for Baker Tilly, who is on uh, with us with the Zoom call at this point in time, or the information given at our study session was sufficient to answer all of the questions that you might have had. Dakota, do you have any public comment you'd like to share with us? No, I'm just the eye. I'm okay. Just the eye. <laughs> <laughs> so, with no public comment at this point, we will uh, adjourn the public hearing. Thank you, Jay, for being available to us this evening. I appreciate your willingness to join us. Absolutely. Looking forward to coming up there in July and going through the uh, financial planning. So sure. you guys have a great evening. You, you too. Thank you. you, you. Too. Thank you.
And we will now resume the regular board meeting. Brought to you by, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Um, we begin uh, with H, consent items, approval of the minutes from May 22nd, 2023, and the minutes from June 6th, 2023 uh, study session. Did everybody have a chance? I do have one correction. Okay. It's on the study session minutes. Um, Jane Herndon is from Ice Miller, and Tyler is from Baker Tilly, and they were just misappropriated. They, it's already corrected. Oh, okay. I looked yeah. and I didn't see it corrected on sorry. what I saw. I'm sorry, Amber. I pulled no, it up so no, I can see it. I didn't. You're good at this. That's all right. Mm -hmm. I think I looked so. No, on on what I pulled up, it still says Jane with Baker Tilly and. Oh, oh okay. In the number one, it is corrected. Oh, in the okay. in the list of who was there, it still needs to be corrected. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. So it was just there twice. Oh, yeah, so sorry. just in case somebody would look back on that. That's I will get that correct. Thank you, member. Anything else? Uh, anyone else have questions or comments about the um, minutes? No. At this time, I will accept a motion to approve the minutes as presented. I make a motion that we approve them as corrected. Correct. As corrected. Oh, that's even better. Thanks, Jim. Second. <laughs> Got it. All right. All those in favor, raise your right hand. One, two, three, four, five. Motion carries five to zero. That was a whole page on public hearing that I had. That's okay, Mark. I recycle all my paper. Yeah. Okay. I do. <laughs> I do. I do. Um, all right. And then next is uh, the funds reports. Anything you want to share with us, Todd? Just some numbers. All right. How about it? Education fund. In May, we have receipts of $1,005,607.98. We had expenses of $918,134.66. Cash balance in the education fund at the end of May is $1,312,524.12. Uh, in the debt service fund, we have receipts of $7,048.72. There were no expenses. The cash balance in the debt service fund at the end of May is $898,767.31. And in the operations fund, we had receipts of $13,482.15. We had expenses in May of $429,107.77. Our cash balance at the end of May in the operations fund is three, negative $332,290.25. That was hard to say, I apologize. Um, just to reiterate from the study session that we have received our June, June disbursement in the operations and debt service fund. So that balance is- As of right now. As of right now, we are not there, so. And uh, moving on to the uh, claims, we have uh, presented, or we, Todd has presented uh, claims in the amount of $695, dollars $695,044, I can't see, it's not a period there, it's another, is that 600, it's 1,000, right? Okay, that, there was a comma in our period. Yeah. Uh, $695,047.42. And uh, <clears throat> that document is there for your perusal. And uh, the next item is the um, approval of payroll for May 19th and June 2nd, totaling $1,024,715.42. $1, are there any questions or comments about the claims and payroll? Okay, at this time, I would ask that we uh, approve all the uh, financial presentation um, as presented. So moved. Thank you, Mark. Second. Sir. Thank you, Stephen. <laughs> I know. Okay, you had the first. 
just louder. It's okay. We're good with that. Stuff. <laughs> it's all right. Okay, and then all oh, my favorite part: reading of the policies. All right. This is the second. <laughs> Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. We should vote on that other one first. I'll trash now. Okay. Um, so we'll approve those. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries five to zero. All right. Moving on. I was just want to get this. You know, move on. Stop. All right. Um, this is the second reading of the policies and bylaws uh, that was presented at last month's meeting. Although we did update two of those policies to reflect our uh, board, or uh, I'm sorry, the policy committee session that we had, um, there were new ones in that packet that would supersede the ones that had already been presented. So I went ahead and placed the new ones in this for consideration. Okay. All right. So I've got all the file attachments, but these are the numbers that I need. All right. So the second reading policy, we have bylaw number 0167.3, the second one, 1430, 2414, 2464, or 62, excuse me, 3120.07, 3139, 3147, 3431, 5772 6110-6212-6220-6621-6625-5-6800-7440-8500-9150-9160. Board members, I encourage you to read those when you have the opportunity. And um, any, uh, our next meeting, we will uh, have our third and final reading and a vote on those. If you have any questions or concerns, that's a good time to bring them up. Okay, moving on, action items. Approval of Woodlawn contract for occupational services. So this is a request of, out of our um, from our director of special services. Um, this is a standard contract that we often engage with with Woodlawn Hospital in order to provide for us the occupational <coughs> services for our students who require that for their IEP. Any questions? Anyone else? I would entertain a motion to approve this as read. So moved. Casey? Second. Mark. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries five to zero. Next, we have approval of the school meals cost increase for 23-24 school year. So the state does provide for us um, a formula tool that we need to use to determine meal prices. And per the formula that they sent to us this year for us to remain in compliance, we need to raise our breakfast and um, lunch prices by 10 cents each at both the elementary and at the secondary level. And that will keep us in compliance in that department. Okay. Any questions from anybody? All right. And at this time, uh, we will, uh, I'll accept a motion to uh, approve the um, raises to our student lunches as according to state law. So moved. Thank you, Jenny. I'll second. Thank you, Stephen. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Just so you know, if you raise your left hand, I'll probably still count it. Just so. <laughs> it's going to test you. <laughs> I know you are. That's why I said that. All right. Moving on. Approval to scrap materials from the tech department. So each year, the tech department um, goes through and these are all um, items that either could not be fixed, items that were found buried in those closets as we're doing our deep cleanings, those types of things. All of these are items that it is not worth trying to fix them or they can't be fixed or there is no resale value. 
we um, offer those to our robotics club first and then after that we would ask for permission to dispose of the surplus items. Any questions? I do appreciate that the wires and cables are just, there's just a bunch of them. <laughs> 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 yeah, a whole bunch. All righty then, I'll entertain a motion at this time. So moved. Stephen? Second. And Mark. All those in favor? Motion carries five to zero. Approval of the overnight field trip to Brown County State Park, July 28th to July 30th. I believe Mr. Haas is here to speak in regards to that. The cross country trip, yes. So this is a trip that they've taken, I mean, when Scott Staubbaum was here, he went when um, he, the guy that moved to Warsaw last year, he was the coach, they went, they go, they run all day, then they sleep in tents and get up and run all day. I don't know how that sounds exhilarating, but the kids love it. Um, and so it's something that Coach Goodman would like to continue. Um, they're actually going to Brown County this year. They've went up to the dunes before and ran on the sand all day and then slept in tents. So it might be a little cooler in Brown County with the shade. So that's what they would like to do. All right, any questions? I saw he didn't have his second chaperone listed, and later in the personnel report, we have a couple of people that we're going to assume like, approve to be coaches. But I assume he'll take a female sh extra chaperone. I know or? Coach, or, or, or AD Green was talking to him about that. I don't know if they've come up with that female yet or not, but that is something they're looking at. Do you know more? I didn't know. Do you know? I don't know. Okay. But yeah. I just know something we don't know. Just make sure we got one. I'm not volunteering. Just no, wait, exactly. <laughs> that's not to be construed as a volunteer. <laughs> they just need support. I can do that. I can sit in the cabin. <laughs> well, no, no, I will not. I would be inclined to make that a stipulation. But that does absolutely happen. Just so it's a formal thing. They, yeah. You guys can run behind it's the board saying that. I'll just bring my golf cart and follow along. Then. Water bottle and the first aid kit. There you go. All right. Um, Mark, you want to make that motion then? I'll make that motion. No. Oh, yes. That we approve the field trip? Provided that there provided is there's at a least female. one female chaperone. Absolutely. I'll second that. Okay. All those in favor, please raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five. Five to zero. Moving on to donations. Unless that's been changed since about 3.30. Oh, All right. For June, donations to RMS, $500. Recycling efforts during the 2022-2023 school year uh, from the Recycling Center. That's great. Yeah. Um, school Corporation, $1,500. Corporation Safety Backpacks from Wilson Fertilizer and Grain, LLC. And uh, again, $1,500 for the corporation from the Tom Wilson Memorial Fund at, again, $1,500, $3,000 from that family to make sure that all of our teachers have updated and uh, uh, ready to use emergency kits in their classrooms. And that's just a, a huge blessing, a huge blessing. So we thank you uh, for your donations, uh, Wendy and Jeff and families and um, Nidra and the late Tom worked hard all his life and now he's doing great things for the community even after he's gone, so that's great. Mm -hmm. And the Recycling Center, that's always a win-win. I mean, that's just a good thing for kids and it's good for the community, so thank you. Uh, next item, personnel report. We have to vote to accept the donations. Oh, yeah. I had a busy day. <laughs> Could I have a motion to approve the donations as read? So, Second. Jenny and Stephen. All those in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries, five to zero. And next is the personnel report. Um, recommendations from Columbia Elementary, Amy Olinger, daycare assistant for Little Zebby Daycare, hourly rate, 12.51. Laura Bradley, daycare assistant for Little Zebby Daycare, hourly rate, 12.51. Riddle Elementary Summer Reading Program, Emily Brown, Instructional Assistant, 
hourly rate, 1509. Diana Crabb, instructional assistant, hourly rate. Where is he? There's no dollar amount there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Sydney Turpenfeldis, instructional assistant at her hourly rate. Summer school, May 30th to June 9th. Joanna Johnson, teacher at her hourly rate. Hannah Schaefer, instructional assistant at her hourly rate. Taylor Tharp, guidance counselor, annually $41,150. RMS, intercessions. Alexis McSherry, teacher at her hourly rate. Emily Brown, instructional assistant at her hourly rate. Adam Packer, instructional assistant at his hourly rate. RHS athletic recommendations. Blair Eber, RHS girls soccer, unpaid volunteer. Mark Gordon, RHS girls soccer, unpaid volunteer. Rebecca Bollinger, RHS junior varsity volleyball coach, stipend $3,395. Stacy Wilson, assistant volleyball coach, stipend $2,583. Troy Pryor, RMS cross country head coach, Stipend, excuse me, $1,240. John Walkman, RMS, Cross Country Assistant Coach. Stipend, $950. Uh, corporation recommendations. Tristan Wilson, Wilson, additional time working on marketing videos. Stipend, $600. Michelle Yeager. Summer crew leader for our hourly employees, hourly rate, 1686. Maintenance department recommendations. Michael Isley, building tech effective June 5th, 2023, hourly rate, $12 an hour. Zane Ruff, building tech effective June 6th, 2023, hourly rate, $12. FMLA, Chris Hooks, maintenance department, May 24th through August 30th, 2023. Cindy Hart, RHS custodial staff, ongoing intermittent starting June 5th, 2023. Resignations. Gretchen Clark, Columbia Elementary Instructional Assistant, 5-26-23. Tabitha Brown, RMS maintenance as of 5-23-23. Michelle Gibson, RMS and RHS Instructional Assistant. Gabriella Meager, ASC Classroom. Mariana Miller, Riddle Elementary, offered May 24th, 2023. Tammy Hooker, Riddle Instructional Assistant, as of May 26, 2023. Joanne Smith, Riddle Instructional Assistant, as of May 26, 2023. Kennedy Musselman, Little Zebby Daycare, Columbia, as of May 26, 2023. Termination. Maya Overmeyer, Columbia Daycare, effective May 25th, 2023. Joni McVeigh, Riddle Elementary, effective May 26, 2023. Harrison Corcos, Riddle Elementary, effective May 26, 2023. Angela Overmeyer, Riddle Elementary, effective May 26, 2023. Bill Wyatt, RMS, effective May 26, 2023. For clarification, if I may, before this goes to vote, with the hourly rate, those would be their hourly rate that they are currently on. Mm -hmm. And then I would respectfully like to pull John Walkman's name until I have a chance to do a little bit deeper dig into that one. So if we could uh, respectfully pull him at this time and then um, we'll bring a recommendation back at the next meeting. Okay, thank you. Um, so uh, at Jana's request, we will pull John Walkman and I will accept a motion to re to uh, approve all of the other um, names on the uh, personnel report at this time. So moved. Thank you, Jenny. Second. Casey, all those in favor, raise your right hand. <coughs> Motion carries five to zero. Superintendent Bidden. I'll ask um, Oscar if you don't mind sharing things that are going on there at the high school this summer. Now we've got summer school going on with health, PE, math, English, we have a few kids doing some extra classes online to help make up some credits that they you saw last at the study session. I think when we discussed data that they were behind and uh, things are going really well. We got one more week of it, so 
scoreboard arrived in the district today. Scoreboard did arrive in the district today. <laughs> it's sitting out there, and they're supposed to come what I call dead week, the IHSA off week, which is July 4th week, to install it is what it currently is the time frame that we have right now. So, yeah. You know, the sports are off and running. You can get on um, whatever that, what is it called? Not Game Changer. What's the name of that? Evently, to see whenever practices are, if you're in the community and interested in having a student athlete that's interested in getting some workouts in, that's all available on Evently to see what every sports practice and open gym and open facility is. So, yeah, we're good to go. Currently fully staffed. Let's hope it stays that way. I was giving my question. Usually it's musical chairs. <laughs> I, know. I know. We're early in the summer, but that's good yes. at this point. <laughs> Uh, well, we're currently hiring for a couple of positions. Um, I'm going through that process, so uh, we've been working on that. We've got uh, summer reading going on. It's actually being held at Riddle, but it's uh, Riddle and Columbia kids both. We've also got uh, summer speech going on in our building um, for the next couple weeks, so that's been uh, started up today. And then just kind of behind the scenes, we've been um, working on Melissa one of the things that our building has that a lot of the other buildings don't experience is we have the incoming kids for the first time so it's we get a lot of the, have to get a lot of the paperwork and things for registration um, for that first enrollment into the corporation so there's a lot of work that goes on in the summertime um, prepping for that um, so we've got all the names of our kindergarten kids that we you know are planning on having attend and we're working on getting that stuff even before registration starts We've also got some state requirements for like our reading plans we have to have submitted, so I've been working on those. And then Megan and I have been working on our uh, Title I grants and our pre-app. Um, Megan will be taking over the Title um, Title I and some of the other um, duties on that side of the thing, so I've been working with her, and uh, she's been doing a real good job of picking up on all that kind of stuff. So uh, just a lot of, um, not a lot of, um, kid activities going on right now, but a lot of uh, preparations and uh, behind the scenes things just going on in Columbia. Sounds good. And I talked to Cassie today, she's currently staffed as well, I do believe. She's currently staffed, the only one we have one opening at Riddle at this time, so yeah. talk on the one, we're doing really well. And a speech language pack, right? And two daycare assistants and a special needs IA. So, if you guys know anyone? Starting to get applications rolling in in different departments, which is something we haven't seen for quite a while, which is nice. Not all of them are qualified, but starting to see more of an interest. So, okay. yeah. Okay. okay. If there's anything else for the good of the group, feel free to speak up. If not, we'll call this meeting adjourned. Okay. Hey guys. Hey Why do you say stop it? Okay. I'm going to pee a few more minutes. I'm not going to have any kids. <laughs> we won't tell anyone when the meeting is over.